Myocardial ischemia and infarction. Attention, I consider this chapter the most serious and the most important because recognition of the signs of ischemia and infarction. If you recognize these signs, you will be able to offer help to a wide sector of patients that seek medical advice with the most annoying symptom, which is angina, of course. This is the sequence of ECG changes in case of acute ST elevation MI. Usually the first sign to appear in the ECG is peaking of the T wave associated with ST segment elevation. Then after that, the ST elevation will start to increase more and more with peaking of the T wave. And then after a few hours, it depends on the size of the infarction and the territory of the coronaries which is occluded, the Q wave will start to appear. This is happening in average of six hours. Once the Q wave will start to appear, the ST segment elevation will start to come down. Then we will come to a stage which is called the evolving stage of ST segment elevation MI. And this is very important stage in differentiation between different causes of ST segment elevation. Because as we see here, this is a Q wave with ST segment elevation that was not like before, but it is still elevated. It is not in the baseline yet but the T wave is inverted. So T wave will start to be inverted before the ST segment will come to the baseline. Because in pericarditis, which is a very important other cause of ST segment elevation, the T wave will start to be inverted after the ST segment will come to the baseline. That's why if we found ST segment elevation with inverted T, this is go going more to the ST segment elevation MI rather than being pericarditis. And of course, in pericarditis, there will not be any Q waves except if there is associated myocarditis. And the Q wave will start to be more and more significant with inverted T wave and the ST segment now on the baseline. And later on, T wave will become upright again as before, but the Q wave will remain. Okay, signs of ischemia and infarction in the ECG. We have signs in the ST segment, which is baseline normally. If it is raising, it will be recent MI or acute ST elevation MI. How raising is considered significant? According to the recent guidelines, more than or equal to one millimeter of elevation or one small square in voltage in two successive leads is significant and is enough for diagnosis of ST segment elevation MI, except in V2 and V3. In these two leads, we have to have at least two millimeters in males or 1.5 millimeters in females to diagnose ST segment elevation. If the ST segment is depressed, this is a sign of ischemia, not ST elevation MI. We have also signs in the T wave. Peaking of the T wave is a sign of recent MI, but it is usually associated with ST segment elevation. And we don't have this golden moment that we can pick up the big T wave before the ST segment elevation will be associated with it. So ST segment elevation with peaking of the T wave. If the T wave is flat, this is a sign of ischemia. If it is inverted, this is a sign also of ischemia. Q wave. It signifies old MI. It starts to appear within the first day of MI, which is about six hours of the recent MI. This is its average. Q waves to be pathological or significant. Q wave, it has to be more than two small squares in depth or in voltage, or more than one small square in width to be significant. Recent left bundle branch block. It signifies recent MI, and this is an indication of thrombolytic therapy or primary DCI, as we said before. This is, of course, if it is associated with chest pain. So now we know the signs of ST segment elevation or depression, T wave peaking, flat or inverted, and we have Q waves, and we have left bundle branch block. Now, the persistent raising with ST segment elevation after ST segment elevation MI may indicate aneurysmal formation 
or reinfarction or pericarditis or what's called no reflow phenomena. This is a cat lab sign after opening the coronary. We may have a normal coronary lumen, patent coronary lumen, but without flow. This is called no reflow phenomena and it carries a very bad prognosis. This is like a ghost for the interventionist. So because we have said before that the ST segment should come to the baseline after a few days. But if we have the ST segment persists more than this usual duration, we have to consider one of those. Either aneurysmal formation in the infarcted zone, or no reflow phenomena after intervention, or pericarditis or reinfarction. Of course, two and three are commonly associated with chest pain. Three will be associated with the pleuritic type of chest pain in pericarditis, or reinfarction with, again, anginal chest pain. These are different shapes of ST segment elevation that we can face during interpretation of ST segment elevation in my cases. Localization of infarction. As we said under the title, grouping of the leads, when ischemic changes appear in certain group of leads, this means that there is ischemia or infarction in the site represented by these leads. So anterior wall infarction, the changes will occur in the anterior group from V1 to V6. Anteroceptal infarction from V1 to V4, anteroapical or anterolateral V5 and V6. The inferior wall infarction will be found in lead 2, 3, ABF, which is the inferior group. The posterior infarction. As the posterior wall of the heart should be monitored by electrodes placed on the posterior surface, which is the back of the patient, ischemic changes appear in the anterior chest leads as a mirror image of what is happening backwards. So ST segment raising in the posterior surface will be represented on the anterior chest leads with ST segment depression. And Q waves in the posterior surface will be represented by its mirror image, which will be R wave in V1. So the changes of the posterior MI will appear in V1 and V2 as the following. Like in this illustration, this is V1 showing ST segment depression with inverted T wave and a small R wave. If we invert this image upside down, we will find a small Q wave and then R wave and then ST segment elevation with upright T wave. So this is a mirror image of ST elevation in the posterior electrodes or the posterior leads. And then here, this is the mirror image of a significant Q wave with a mirror image of an inverted T wave. And then at last it will be like that, a very big R wave with upright T wave, which is the mirror image of Q wave with inverted T, and then the T wave will be normal, back to normal again. That's why we said before, tall R in V1 is a sign of either RVH, if it is associated with inverted T wave or posterior infarction, if it is associated with upright T. Posterior MI commonly extends to involve the lateral wall that appears as raised ST segment in V6 and to the inferior surface also that appears as raised ST segment in the inferior leads. And in these cases, we will call it posterolateral or infraposterolateral respectively. The right ventricular infarction. Clinically, we should suspect the right MI when an ordinary left ECG shows inferior or infraposterior MI and the patient has the following. Jugular venous distension or hypotension and or clear chest. So to suspect that the patient has right ventricular infarction, Usually, the patient will have inferior or infraposterior ST elevation MI, and the patient has jugular venous distension, hypotension, or easily provoked hypotension by nitrates or so, and the clear chest. On finding this, we should perform a right ECG. This is done by placement of the limb electrodes in their same sites. Here, we are going to discuss how to perform a right ECG. We said the limb electrodes will be in their same positions, like in the ECG, and V1 and V2 in their sites also, but from V3 to V6, they will be 
in their anatomical sites but on the left side so whatever is in the mid clavicular line on the left side will be in the mid clavicular line on the right side in the mid axillary line and the anterior axillary line on the left side will be in the same anatomical site, sites but on the right side but we will call it in this case as V3R and V4R and V5R and V6R to indicate that these are right electrodes and then if we find ST segment elevation in one V3R, V4R and also we can find this in V5R those are signs of right ventricular involvement by the ST elevation MI avoid using nitrates or vasodilators in this condition why? we will see later treatment of this condition is revascularization either interventional or medical IV fluids with saline like about 1 liter IV infusion and inotropes like dobutamine or so avoidance of nitrates and vasodilators is due to their lowering effect on the preload that is already impaired by the right MI that weakened the right ventricle so this may lead to very serious decline in blood pressure so if you find a patient with right ventricular infarction don't give him nitrates and don't give him vasodilator as we said that recent left bundle branch block is considered a recent MI but in many cases we cannot exactly decide whether the left bundle branch block is recent or not normally in left bundle branch block there is mild ST segment raising in V1 and V2 and mild ST segment depression in V5 and V6 but there is certain criteria that will decide whether there is ischemia associated with this left bundle or not which is called Garbosa criteria or Garbosa criteria if we have ST segment elevation measuring at least one millimeter but concordant concordant means on the same direction of the QRS complex with the QRS complex in any lead this is will count for five points which is the most specific and most sensitive sign and then if we have ST segment depression measuring more than one millimeter in any of V1 and V2 or V3 because as we said before in left bundle branch block there should be some ST segment elevation but not more than five millimeters so if we have at least one millimeter or more of ST segment depression in these leads this is also significant and this is counts for three points discordant ST segment elevation discordant means opposite to the QRS complex direction so discordant ST segment elevation means QRS complex is negative but there is ST segment elevation but more than five millimeters this will give us two points these signs are considered signs of recent ischemia infarction even the left bundle branch block is old when all these are present there is a 95 percent of the specificity of active ischemia this is an example here we have st segment elevation lead one and in avl and also from v2 down to v5 this is almost extensive anterior wall mi and one in avl are also pointing anterior lateral so this is anterior wall infarction this is the reverse we have ST segment depression here in lead 1 and lead AVL and lateral leads also but we have here very clear ST segment elevation in lead 3 and AVF which are going with the inferior leads so this is inferior ST elevation in mind but there is something important here in V1 we have ST segment elevation as we said before this is a hint that the right side or the right ventricle may be affected so we have to do right ECG in, in these cases this is actually a routine now any inferior wall ST elevation MI we should do right ECG and also we shouldn't give any nitrates or vasodilators without doing right ECG to exclude the right ventricular infarction so this is most probably this is an inferior wall infarction associated with RV involvement. Here is also there is ST segment elevation from V1 down to V3. So this is anteroceptal ST elevation MI. 